Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the first installment of the Renaissance webinar series, Future Proof in Your SEO and Digital PR Income in the Age of AI. My name is Andy Blayson. I'm co-founder of JBH, the digital PR agency, and I will be your host for today. Uh, in this webinar, we'll explore how AI is reshaping the SEO and digital PR landscape and discuss the potential impact on revenue streams. Um, so get ready to sit back and listen to us, get ready to gain some valuable insights, some, some practical advice, some actionable tips, some anecdotal tips um, in how to stay ahead of the curve and thrive alongside the rise of AI. Um, so thrilled to announce our speaker panel today. We have three amazing guests, which I'll let uh, introduce themselves. So please go ahead. Awesome. Hi, I'm Jess. Um, I am co-founder of SEO consultancy Digheads. I know that name, um, people often get that wrong, especially when they've had a few drinks. It can be a dodgy <laughs> one. Um, and I've been in SEO for eight years now. And I guess this is the most exciting development to happen throughout my career. So I'm really excited to be in the thick of it. And um, yeah, excited to share some insights. Cool. Hey everyone, uh, so I'm Adam, uh, I come from an agency background originally where I was for around nine, ten years, uh, moved in house, a little bit too slow for me, um, so ended up going freelance for a year and a half, uh, and then I'm now working for a company called Talent Inc, where I head up the SEO there, uh, so we're a career services company, so AI kind of impacts everything we do from kind of generating and creating resumes, through to writing resumes, and we kind of we kind of act as a bit of an internal agency, I suppose, and uh, I head up the SEO for 30 websites now, which is across the globe. Uh, so yeah, AI is um, certainly having an impact on us and excited to kind of discuss it for everyone here. Hey, Adam, cheers. Um, hey, I'm Andy Holland. I'm the director of SEO at, at JVH. Um, which were a digital PR and SEO agency based in Manchester. And yeah, I've been in SEO professionally for eight years. Um, I have a weird background. I first learned SEO whilst working in the intelligence sector in the police. It was about 20 years ago. Um, it's a strange story, but yeah. And, and uh, I work with a range of clients with JH um, working and I've worked in agencies as well and also ran my own business, my own consultancy for quite a number of years. So um, yeah, great to be here. Awesome. Thanks for the intro, guys. So we've got a wealth of experience uh, on the panel today. Um, so how it's going to work is we've got 45 minutes of questions that um, I've prepared for the, for the panel. Um, for those that wish to um, ask a question, if you look at the top of the chat window, you'll see a, a question mark in a speech bubble. Um, please feel free to give um, some questions, um, which um, we'll have 10 minutes at the end to go through. Um, other people in the chat, you can upvote the questions if you like the look of one, add your own, etc. We're also running a poll as well. So please um, put your answers onto the poll. Um, and at the end, we will see um, what the answers are for that and, and get as general vibe over the, the, the the way that AI is, is, is affecting people's mentalities, etc. cetera. Um, so thanks for the intros. Without further ado, um, we're going to jump into the first question. Um, so this question, I'm going um, to aim this at, at Jess first. So um, Jess, uh, how do you think the rise of AI and AI tools uh, will impact the revenue of uh, SEO professionals? Love this question. Um, <laughs> I'm not just saying this, but I think that the revenue for me, obviously, it's an obvious thing, and I'll explain why. It's because SEO is not a channel. Organic search is a channel, right? And SEO is the idea of optimizing the performance of a website for a particular channel. So while we have search, we will always have SEO. While humans search online, SEOs will have jobs. And I don't see that coming to an end anytime soon. It's going to get more complicated. It's going to grow, if anything. So in my eyes, the revenue of my consultancy and everyone sitting here is going to grow, actually, over the next few years. Because we are at a point where search and the nature of human search, the, the models of the kind of um, the tech that we are using at the moment to search is getting more intelligent. It's understanding humans and how we talk better than ever. So for me, it's a, it's a complete, um, well, it's, it, it doesn't make logical sense, the idea that this is going to put SEOs out of work, because what's happening is the way we search is getting more advanced. So logically, you would then say, if you're a company, you would say, okay, search is changing a hell of a lot. We do really well. We sell, you know, tons of our products through organic search. You know, the margins are amazing. 
um, this is going to change. We feel threatened by this change. And obviously the answer then is I'm going to go to an SEO, someone who knows all about this channel and how to optimize for this channel. So for me, for SEOs, the future looks really bright. And if anything, I would say to the content writers out there, to, you know, PPC guys, and I think we need to, SEOs need to branch out into learning PPC too and XYZ, uh, et cetera. So I think for us, this is going to be a growing industry exponentially more than it has been in the past. Okay, so you've got quite a positive outlook on, on it there, which um, which is good to hear, and I'm sure many people in, in the uh, in the chat are, are happy to hear that as well. Um, so, Adam, I sort of I'll, I'll, I'll pose this question to you. Um, do you think that the the current marketplace fear of AI is justified? Um, what do you think is driving that, and um, or do you think that it's a bit of an overreaction? I think it's it's all it's SGE, it's Google and their SGE, and everyone's scared about how it's going to take traffic away. But I think Jess summed it up really nicely there that SEO's kind of been the same for the last 10 years, right? It hasn't really changed. And now we're seeing a change. People are panicking. People don't like change, right? And when it comes to SEO, it is going to be about broadening what that channel is. It's not just organic search anymore. It's going to be SEO across all channels. So that is your TikToks, that's YouTube. It's It could be anything. And that's where I think people doing SEO the right way will thrive. I think people doing it and kind of taking shortcuts with AI and just spamming everything and trying to still push, I think that's the people that are going to struggle. So I think if you're a good SEO and doing it the right way, I think you'll, you'll kind of thrive in, in this world of AI. So you don't really think it's the AI itself that's driving the fear. You just think it's the people around it. The narrative, it's, it's quite new to market. Obviously, ChatGPT became accessible from, you know, from about November last year to everybody. Um, of course, SEOs are, are, are not um, new to using um, AI tools, et cetera, for, for your, for, within your industry. Um, so the fear, you believe, is, is kind of um, manufactured a little bit. Yeah, 100 percent. Yeah. And it's, it's the big announcements. And that's what has, um, I think, pushed that on a little bit. Okay, cool. Um, so, Andy, um, in, in your opinion, um, which roles in the uh, SEO industry uh, do you think AI will affect the most? And, and will it lead to elimination of certain roles uh, within the next couple of years? Um, yeah, I mean, so my view on this is a bit flexible, if I'm honest with you, in terms of... Um, if we look in it, it sort of goes back to all three que the questions you've already asked in terms of I, I massively agree with Adam in terms of what we're going to see is search go from being vertical to horizontal. Mm -hmm. So you'll have width across the search not, and, and depth as well. So in actual fact is that search is going to be even easier to find what you want. It's going to be even easier to find businesses and brands and brands and businesses of all sizes are going to have a chance to, to get in there, you know, whether it be local, whether it be somebody putting a tiktok or a video short out there about their local florist and things like that there's going to be so many opportunities um to to be involved in seo so i think we're going to see an uptick in certain roles and probably a downplay in others so for example i think execs um will be more productive so it probably means we need perhaps less executives um and we're going to need perhaps more videographers to come in and get involved in video search and things like that. So I, I think what's going to happen is jobs are going to change. I think writers will end up being a lot more editor-based because they're going to be leveraging the AI tools. Um, so I think there's going to be a modification of, of roles, but I am massively on Jessica's page in terms of I think the SEO industry is going to grow because ad, ad costs are always going to rise, there's no doubt about that. And also, I just think there's going to be a need for more SEOs, it's just that their their roles and identification and what they do generally is going to adapt and change. So I think it's really exciting, but I also think we're going to end up in a massive growth. We're going to end up with possibly a shortage of SEOs at first. We're going to end up with roles merging, changing, and then I think we'll end up with uh, the new world order will be the fact that people are going to SEO because it's a way to get your brand in front of more people, and it's really cost effective to do it. 
So really, it's sort of a, a, a sort of opposite of, of of what I'd expect from that answer, really. So you think that potentially we might see an influx in new SEOs coming to market with these tools that are available, um, those that are looking to make the transition from maybe a, a, a more traditional sector into um, SEO. Um, is that what you think? Yeah. Well, so if you think about what stops people from generally getting involved in SEO is the productivity. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you go and hire an SEO and it's been traditionally very expensive for content. It's traditionally very expensive for an SEO because there's a lot of manual tasks you know, schema and things like that, those tools are actually going to mean that your SEO actually delivers more value. And so if the SEO, SEO delivers more value at, in a shorter time sp it's, it's space, then it's only natural to assume that more people will see the value of SEO and because they can access that value earlier because we're, we're basically bringing more people into the market because we can do more in a shorter period of time. So in the end, you'll end up with that kind of growth. And as well as the width of the search channels like TikTok, YouTube and things like that become even more powerful Then I mm. think and other websites start to grow, then you're going to see channel specific SEO as well take off. Um, and, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if you have, uh, you know, now we have Amazon SEO agencies, but the SEO agencies of the future will do it all, I think. And it will be they're doing UX, they're doing um, conversion rate, they're doing behavioral science, they're doing Amazon SEO, TikTok SEO, YouTube SEO, that you go there. So it's all like Jessica said, it's organic search or as I like to say, organic search optimization, not just SEO. So it's going to grow as a marketplace. But I do think we're going to have some turbulence before that time. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so thanks for the input on the on the commercial side there. So, so Jess, um, pose this question to you about um, uh, Google's search generative experience. Obviously, this is uh, the hot topic at the moment, and what everyone's sort of um, asking for some advice on. Um, so, do you think that the SGE uh, will harm interest in the SEO industry? And if so, how will how will SEOs adapt to this, or or, or are SEOs always adapting? Oh, yeah, SEOs are always adapting. I think that's why I've it's funny because I keep saying to myself, I'd love to do a course, but my expertise is SEO. And if I do a course, it's going to be out of date in six months <laughs> because it's always changing. Um, and I think with SGE, what I find really interesting is when I watched um, Google's webinar, when they first revealed all the changes, it looked to me like picking up a magazine and opening the front page of a magazine rather than a search engine. It was like editorial. It was so much imagery, little snippets, quotes. Um, it was so interactive, videos, social media snippets. It was, you know, you've got the perspectives tabs and all that. It really felt like they were they're turning it into almost like an, uh, a digital editorial type experience. Um, mm -hmm. And for me, that will start to attract, because I think SEO, we've typically been put in this bucket of being these kind of very techy, nerdy, data-driven, but not massively creative. And I think SGE is going to move the industry to a much more creative space and um you know where we're going to have to really think about the imagery we're using in our content and the video stuff and how we can get involved in conversations in reddit and so that brings in a much more marketing mindset that i think the seo industry is typically neglected quite a bit um and for that reason i think a lot more i can see you know younger people now going this is actually a really exciting thing. It's not just sitting there with Excel spreadsheets and it's all about that creative nuance and all of the different things like Andy said, social media and stuff. So I think it's going to grow and be much more appealing in that sense. Okay, cool. Um, and Adam, how do you, you feel about that? Have you seen that you've had to adapt your, your style in the last six to 12 months? Yeah. And I think it's something that has kind of just followed on from the, the classic EAT principles or now it's EEAT. It's showing that experience and any website that is just churning out the same SEO content that anyone else can do isn't going to succeed with this kind of AI world. It's the perspective, it's the real life experience and it's stuff that we should have always been doing anyway. Like, if you're reviewing a product, taking your own images of that product to show that you have actually tested it, you have actually reviewed it. And that is about creating decent content that people want to read. Um, and pr a lot of people will just still create that generic SEO content where it's like, what is X? What, what is this? Like, it's all very, very basic. Mm -hmm. So I don't think really, if you've been doing it the right way for a couple of years, I don't think too much has to change there. 
if you're creating the great content, adding multimedia and thinking about extra elements that you can add that somebody can't just kind of spring up with chat GPT, you should be okay. Yeah, interesting. Um, Andy, what, what do you think? I mean, obviously, you've been around SEO for quite some time now. So um, adapting to survive is, is kind of um, sort of built into your DNA, I should think, by this point. Um, over the last 18 months, how have you kind of adapted to, to um, you know, um, work better towards the SG improvements and, and things like that? Well, I think the one thing I would say is that it is don't panic. And, and carry on as normal because I, we don't know what this is going to look like. I think I think the game is is this. Google's game is to retain people on search engines for longer. They want people to be on their search engine for longer. And it's interesting what Jessica said about how it, it was an editorial experience, and I get that. So for me, when I when I saw it, I agree. It's almost like you went, you come to search and you stay there. That's what they want you to do. They want you to go back and forth from websites. They want you to as to search as a tool. Um, now, there's been quite a lot of studies around how and why people go to search. And we go to search in emotional need states, boredom. We, you know, people open TikTok because of boredom. People go to search engines to, um, you know, learn something, be reassured, if, you know, We've all gone to Dr. Google over the years. And the, the, the truth is that we go there for different reasons and we stay there for lots of different reasons. And, and we, used to, we used to say years ago, you go on a search engine and you'd be there for a few hours. That was back in the day. And then now it's more case people on TikTok for ages or Instagram for ages. And so I think Google's fighting back in terms of wanting to keep people on search engines for longer and it's inevitable that you're going to be able to find what you want and things that interest you so i think search engines are going to end up being like almost like entertainment engines in the future and i think that's where we go where we're heading so it isn't just a case of seeing search as um this sort of place which is very linear in terms of it's all about business 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 i think businesses will have to get in the root of they're there to be creatives and creators because we all know that uh, brand marketing full stop is about creativity and, and that's how mm. we remember things so i think brands will will be able to leverage that i think they'll be able to get their business in front of more people in different ways and i think they're going to need seos to help them on that journey to help them to navigate and understand it and i think I, you could argue you'll end up with you could put all the channels of, you know social everything else under one umbrella of search and it'd be even more powerful and we don't have these digital agencies as such where you've got like ppc seo uh, uh social media you end up with one search agency and 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 that's a pub a, a thing that might happen but then you've got the publicity side as well which is you know jbh um digital pr agency and seo agency and, and i think that's the other key is that publicity is going to pay a big part in this because the media is online you know at the end of the day we we if you i'm really love my discovery feed it, it shares stuff to me all the time that's really i, I enjoy it, got, it knows me quite well and it's quite an entertaining feed so i think that what you're going to see is search evolve i think don't panic we don't really know what's going to happen we're in a different phase it's carry on as normal for now keeping one eye on it but also uh, thinking and expanding the thought processes to to the ideas but i think ultimately one of the big parts of this and, and you know in this webinar is we've got to become better at ai and and that's the thing so if you're in an seo now or in the digital PR, or any tool, or any sector really, you owe it to yourself to invest time in AI because I think that's going to be the the separator in terms of people's ability to use AI will definitely be a big part of that. Brilliant! What a great answer. Yeah, I think yeah, the multi-channel sort of approach with search is certainly on its way. Um, so one more one more question around um, SG just quickly from from for you, Jess. Um, obviously, the question is going to come up in a more technical point. You know, how will it affect website traffic? You know, are we looking to probably increase here because of the um, the circle effect of, of of going around all the different um, channels, or um, how in your mind do you do you see tackling this this question, which will probably be posed to you over over the next couple of months? I'm sure yeah definitely um i think andy's point was spot on around google want to keep people on google more and um and i think as a result web traffic will be down but i think largely for those kind of upper funnel more generic queries i don't 
see traffic for really valuable queries tanking that much um, at, at the moment. I think it will be those more, you know, anything that can be answered by Bard, um, which so more generic, um, less niche stuff. Um, I definitely expect to see, and I have been saying to clients, just we need to prepare for this. Some of the content that performs really well right now because it's very generic might we're, we're going to see a drop in traffic for sure. Um, yeah, that's how I see it. Okay, yeah, interesting. Um, Adam, do you have the same view on that? Yeah, I think the other thing you need to think about is that Google still wants people to click through to websites. They make most of their money through Google Ads, which are stuck all over a lot of these generic websites as well. So we, we don't know exactly what impact it's going to have because they obviously have other ways of making money, but that's the main business model from what I'm aware. Um, and you've also got other ways of searching because we're we're kind of always in this AI place now. This is what we know. But a lot of people aren't. A lot of people don't know how to kind of write prompts or search with AI or kind of if they search for something, how do they get that next step because the initial answer didn't give them what they wanted. So it's going to be much easier for those people to just scroll down a little bit and go back to their classic browsing and go through what they wanted to do. So I don't know right now what that impact looks like. I think as we start to kind of the younger audience, because they're probably mainly using TikTok as well. So I don't know how much traffic that they're sending through Google right now. Um, so yeah, it's really difficult to say because there's so many different ways it could go, but I'm, I'm not too concerned apart from the big, big generic stuff. I think that's where, where the impact will be. Cool. Interesting. Thanks, guys, for your, for your take on that. So we'll move away from kind of the search element here now and we'll go, go into what the sort of the, the main um, emphasis of, of this is about, which is about sort of income. So um, I will target this one to you, Andy. So um, as more uh, SEO professionals are utilising AI for um, time saving and volume, um, do you think that you SEO should pass on cost savings from AI to clients? Oh, that's 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 an interesting one. Okay, so um, the problem you have is is internally most agencies have an hourly rate and by the hour in it, and that's no that's no secret because that's the easiest way to to monetize and understand how it goes. And sometimes that's told to the client. Some people do charge by the hour quite openly, like a solicitor would, and some people have an internal rate and then charge on a value based pricing. If we live in a um, in a world of AI where things are quicker to do then, you know, the idea is you have to move to a value-based pricing because, you know, that's where our profitability increases. And, and and the objective to the client is, you know, the old thing is, well, how long does it take you to do this? Well, what does it matter to you how long it takes us to do? I want to know how much work I'm getting out of you. Well, you know, but you want the results, you know. So there's a, a fantastic um, webinar by the company called the future with chris doe where he talks about hourly based pricing and i highly recommend anyone to check that check that out because what you're ending up with here is you there's a danger you can commoditize seo and say look at all these deliverables we can do but actually what we're actually doing with these deliverables is bringing the future result forward so we're not actually saying that the, the, we're actually helping them to realize the value with a quicker time span and if we said okay we've got to reduce our prices to, to for that process we'd be we'd be harming our ability so the better you are at seo and the more experienced you are at seo it takes you less time to do tasks because you know how to do the task you know that which tasks to do and which not which tasks not to do and you understand strategy better because you've got far more time in the job now if you and then reduce your or your rates because of hourly and because you can do more what ends up happening is you're punishing yourself for actually being good so because you could hire somebody that takes eight hours to do the same job that took you an hour to do mm -hmm. and that's the same thing with chat gtp and ai tools you you're actually going to be punishing somebody for being better in knowledge and knowing what to do and not do so we can't go down that route of commoditizing prices what we've got to do is promote and position the value of seo and do that really qu quickly i mean hey I've got a book called The Value of SEO. It's a bit of a pitch there. But the, 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 the point is, is that that's what we're at. As an industry, we do a terrible job 
of actually positioning how SEO helps a brand, how, how SEO works, how you can get sales from SEO. Yet we all work with brands that are crushing it with SEO. And we do a terrible job explaining and articulating that value proposition. And that's the challenge, the greatest challenge for us to become really good at articulating that value proposition to say, hey, Luke, this is what you get with SEO. And then the idea is actually now we can do it even faster. What would have taken two years to get your results, we can actually do in a year because we can do produce more volume, more effort. You're going to get more deliverables. And yeah, but the price is actually higher, even perhaps mm -hmm. because we're actually delivering more value earlier and you're going to get the end result earlier. So and I actually see SEO is actually growing in, in, in revenue because you deliver more and get that result faster because that's what everyone wants, the results. And I think, you know, it's the old adage of, do you, how much did you get paid? Did you get paid for turning the screw or knowing which screw to turn? And I think we've got to position ourselves as SEO is, is about you know which screws to turn, and we've got an automated screwdriver that does it really quickly. But you're not paying for the screwdriver, you're paying for the knowledge. Yeah, brilliant answer. So really, you know, the rise of AI here. This is just another tool in the in the uh, for the arsenal in the toolbox of of SEOs, allowing you to actually get maximised more value out of what what we do per hour um, versus the time when it actually was just a a long haul to actually get that information and put it in front of people. Um, Jess, you were nodding along quite um, feverishly there with, with that. So um, do you have uh, something to add to to that? Yeah, I was just going to say, like, you know, we we use tools like Ahrefs, SEMrush. We use all these types of tools we always have, and no one has an issue with those. All those tools do is they help you do something quicker than you would have, right? And it's like we all work probably roughly seven to eight hour days. If we're going to use AI, we're not going to suddenly clock off at 10 a.m. after an hour in the office. No, we're still going to fill our days, but we're probably going to fill it with more value and yeah. tasks that are actually we're going to get rid of some of those like laborious Excel spreadsheets and make that that stuff much quicker. So yeah, yeah. it's um, more value for sure. I guess in a way it'd be like having a go at the taxi driver because he's using a sat nav uh, to, to get you to where he needs to go. But realistically, it's going to get you there more effectively, more efficiently and, and on time. Um, so, so yeah, so um, just to stay on that sort of area a little bit, but I'll pose this question to you, Adam. Um, what ethical considerations do you think S SEO professionals should take when they're um, utilising AI tools and technologies? And do you think that there's a, a boundary that should be sort of set or um, is kind of free range? I feel like I'm the worst person here to ask about the ethical considerations with AI. But um, I think that there is certainly considerations to take there, especially when you think about things like mid journey and copyright, mm -hmm. the same with content and co copyright and how that has been pulled from the internet and is now being used to generate content or whatever that may be. But when you're talking about SEO and the tasks that we will do as an SEO, I can't see too many ethical issues there and sorry just to go back to one of the things or what we were just speaking about in the last yeah. question you also have to consider what type of task we're doing because we're not going to be writing content with this a lot of the time we like even if you take keyword research a super simple task the output of some of that ai just isn't isn't anywhere near what we need it to be yet so when we're talking about time saving and ethical concerns and stuff and using ai in our day-to-day -day jobs I don't know how much of the really kind of the, the stuff that somebody with experience will be using it for. It's the admin tasks. It's generating alt text. It's all that stuff that people don't want to do. Doesn't actually add a huge amount of, you don't get a huge amount of benefit from doing it. It's yeah, it's the, the super high level tasks that require knowledge where I don't think AI is really going to touch too much. So going back to the original question, I I can't think of anything with SEO that is an ethical concern, but I don't know about Andy and Jess. Yeah, I'll open that up to, to you guys. Um, Jess, um, any ethical concerns that you have, or have you seen it being maybe utilised in quite a poor way? Um, so uh, I'm sure I'm sure we have at some point. Yeah. <laughs> maybe people selling it too quickly. I noticed that everyone's become an expert in SEO, um, AI for SEO over the last couple of months. Um, you know, uh, gone, are, gone are the web free experts all of a sudden. Um, but yeah, um, what do you think about that? Yeah, for sure. Um... The, the concern for me is more like industry specific. So um, when we're looking at like YMYL, finance and health medical industries, so that could be a bit of a tentative concern around if we are, if people are pumping out AI content, which 
they are for sure. Um, who's checking the references? Who's checking any health claims that are made? Who's checking any advice around financials or personal finances and things like that? So, but I don't know if that's necessarily a new issue. It's probably just been magnified by AI. I think there's always been dodgy content out there. But um, I agree with Adam in the sense that without us getting into like the sanctity of writing and the kind of ethics around that, I don't see in our industry anything that massively concerns me. Um, and yeah, I would hope that, well, I think AI is getting much better at not just throwing out random references. You know, if it, if it kind of talks about facts, it now, it's now, I think there's a plugin now that um, recommends sort of real references, scientific references and journals. So that's going to get better. And I hope that issue will be rectified and addressed uh, soon. And I think it will, to be fair. Yeah, brilliant. And Andy, what, what's your feelings on the efficacy of, of these things? I, I think it's um, the tools are fine. It's the um, it's more, I think, now the biggest risk is redundancy for people. And and, and I think um, we live in right now in economically challenging times. There's no doubt about that. And um, and, you know, agencies, you know, agencies and businesses are struggling and if they think that they can make savings and, and efficiency savings through AI tools, there's a very seductive danger where what happens is they turn around and say, you know, well, how can we reduce costs? Let's get rid of X, Y, Z people. And then you can do more because you can replace that. And that's, and that's, that's redundancy has always been that kind of case that's gone on for years in terms of, you know, that we get rid of, someone gets rid of four people because, uh, but then the, the other four can carry on the work and they do twice as much work. Well, now the argument is, yeah, well, they can do twice as much work because because we've got we can able to use AI for those kind of jobs, so I do think there's an ethical sort of balance that sort of it needs to be had by um, people in terms of how we treat humans in this AI culture that's developing regarding that. Now, you know, economics or economics is just the way it is in terms of there might be redundancies as a result of AI, and there will be a cross sector. So, for example, uh, my friend is a voiceover artist, and he's having to close his business because the voiceover uh, clients, the people who use voiceovers have decided they can use AI rather than pay for humans. And now his voice can be stolen, be replicated, and you can't find it. There's no way of tracking it. So in actual fact, that is an industry. There will always be voiceover artists, but at scale, voiceover artistry is now done. He even says that. It says it's not, he can't formulate a living the bottom's dropped out because of the AI market. So, and that's an ethical thing then, okay? So so I'm just going to use, we talk about content and we don't think outside industries, outside mm. of the SEO and, and wider sphere in terms of there's an industry, a whole industry, which have decided we don't need to worry about, we don't need humans. We don't need voiceover artists. We can go and use uh, AI now. We can have a voice developed. And that's an ethical thing. So I think from an SEO PR and, and marketing basis, I think we are going to have to deal with those things. I do think that some people will lose the jobs in, in, in the future and make redundancies in terms, but then... I also think the wave of productivity will then go on because the economic conditions won't last. We always things always start to improve, and at that point, I think I think it will scale up and and we have a new era of productivity. But yes, ethical like the human writers versus AI writers, voiceover artists versus uh, AI voiceover, and even videography. You know, if you can have AI videography, why would you need to pay a videographer to do it? And so there is lots of 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 there's authenticity issues i think is the general thing here is do we want to be authentic or not is there a requirement for or not and it's a little bit of a world order and i think ethic wise at the end of the day money always is going to dictate people will need to stay in business and if it keeps businesses open then you we've got to do that um so yeah i think there's there's going to be some tough decisions ahead from an ethical point of view from the human perspective in terms of and but then i also think like i said the er earlier what will happen is new jobs get created so we'll have some turbulence some some jobs might get lost because the illusion of productivity is there and the other thing is productivity is one of them things is when you increase productivity in one area you start to reduce it in another because you know you, for example if everyone takes on more work and we do more because seo isn't so much better well then you need more people to handle some more client stuff you need more people to go on the meetings you need more sales people you mm. need to handle the the demand if seo doubled in demand overnight 
that there's an industry, we'd have to have a lot more salespeople come into AI. We'd have to have a lot more client managers come into to, to the, the world because the SEOs would be busy. So, so there's always going to be a movement from one role to the next. I just think at this time over the next six months, I think it's probably a challenging time that, where, where people might struggle because the ethics will dictate business survival over job safety. Brilliant. Yeah, thanks for that. I mean, following on from that, really, sort of the, in, the, sort of the ethical sort of um, chat that we're having at the moment. Um, Jess, I'll ask you this. So, um, you know, would you openly disclose to a client that you are using AI tool for either content or keyword generation? Um, or do you think that it's not really in any of their business and it's it's another, it's a, just another tool for the for the suite? No, I would actually. And the reason the reason being, I've actually had quite a few ask me like, hey, we actually want to use AI. We want to, we want your expertise. Teach us how we can integrate AI into our processes. And can we make things quicker? And can we do things on a bigger scale? So for me, it's a way of like showing off. You know? um, yeah. It's like, yeah, displaying your knowledge around AI and saying, you know, look what we did. We kind of did this whole spreadsheet of like, like Adam was saying, thousands and thousands of alt text for images that we, we all know they're on the technical audit and nobody ever does them. They just sit there for months, years, you know, nobody gets to them. So things like that, I think it could be a really nice way to actually show your clients that you're ahead of the curve and that they don't have to worry because they're with someone that knows what's happening and knows the changes that are coming. As far as content, no, at the moment, the only place I'm using content is my own experimental website. So I'm using um, a tool called Byword to generate content articles. I'm going to see how that goes mm -hmm. um, over the next six months. But yeah, definitely, I won't be using it for clients. And for that reason, yeah, I haven't had to disclose it, but um, not yet. Not, I'm not ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> and Adam, what about yourself here? Do you see any problems in disclosing the use of AI or do you champion it as well? I'm, I'm for it as well, because we all know clients are probably going to do what they want to do anyway. Um, so if you don't teach them how to do that, then they'll probably just stick five AI generated articles up on their site anyway. So um, why not actually teach them how to do it properly and explain the risks and how what's involved with that? And again, going back to what I said previously, I don't think there's a huge amount that I would necessarily use the classic AI for anyway, in terms of content production or keyword research, et cetera, like volumes and just hallucinations. So yeah, um, there's not too much that I'd be using it for outside of kind of speeding things up and efficiency anyway. So you don't think it's quite there yet for, you know, using this fully optimized um, AI content for enhancing you know the user experience is not quite there yet it it depends if you want to go back to the ethics of it um mm -hmm. so something i i mentioned recently is especially around these plugins they're getting to a really good place now where you can you can scrape content you can take other people's content and take those perspectives from that content to using your content so it kind of starts getting into this weird cycle which Pretty much most content production has done that anyway. You've got a list of five websites open to get ideas and points anyway. But um, yeah, I think content production can be there for certain websites if it's very generic content and you can get the right sources and the right plugins and the right facts within ChatGPT as an example, then it can be pretty close. But right now it, it needs editing to get anywhere near. And when you then have to take all that first step into consideration and then the editing, you may as well at that point just get a writer who knows what they're on about to do that thing. Brilliant, brilliant. Right, okay, so we've, we've talked a little bit there about the commercial side, the search side of it as well. So now my question is going to be to you as, as, as SEO. So um, I'll start with you, Jess, with this one. Um, it, it's likely, obviously, we, we've probably uh, understood that already, that you're using some AI tools within your, your suite of tools. Uh, but what are your favorite AI SEO tools? And what do you think se separates them from, from the rest of the pack? Oh, good question. Well, I mentioned Byword, so I'm mm -hmm. going to talk about that. Okay. Um, if anyone knows that doesn't know, there's a creator on LinkedIn called Jake Ward. He's one of my favorite creators, um, and he's all about content and actually optimizing blog content for conversions um, and he has recently started promoting a tool called byword and it's really really great so one of the use cases is like i mentioned one of my um my side websites that i use as kind of an experimental thing for seo 
um, it's actually an SEO blog. Um, and so one of the things I could do is where I wanted to create a whole batch of like programmatic content with Ahrefs versus SEMrush. So I wanted one template for about 100 different blog posts just comparing SEO tools with the exact same layout. With Byword, you can put in your um, the template, so it would be like in brackets, tool name versus in brackets, tool name. And then it will, you, you export all of the tool names and then it will literally spit out like 500 variations and write content on automatic for every single one of those variations. So that is super interesting, the idea that you can use a tool like that to create very basic programmatic content because Google is not against AI generated content. So if you can find content that doesn't need human input and it's just a fact, like SEMrush does X, Y, Z, it's just factual, um, then it can be really useful. So that is one of my favorite tools at the moment. I really recommend it. And then GP GPT-4, an obvious one, but for me, it's the best. There's so many plugins now. You can do so much with it. Um, internet browsing as well. So, you know, I, I still see people on LinkedIn saying that the data is, is out of date, but it's not now because it's there's internet browsing if you're a PLOS member. So those two are my absolute holy grails right now. Is that included with the GPT Plus or is that with Agent GPT um, plugin as well? Because I've, I've used that to some success myself. Um, but yeah, yeah I, I need to try that one. I haven't. But um, yeah, that's included with GPT Plus. Yeah. OK, cool. So it's, 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 it seems like each update is bringing us more and more closer to what we envision AI really to be, which is, um, you know, something that can search live data for us as well. Um, so that's interesting. And the, the, the tool that you said, was it by word? Is that by word? Yeah, B Y word. Yeah. Okay. Just for the just for the chat there, if you want to uh, um, check that one out, um, Adam. Yeah, same question to you, really. You know, what tools have you seen? What are you using? What What do you think is a, a must have for for SEOs? It's going to be a super boring answer. Um, Google Sheets, just with AI, and just finding efficiencies and building your own stuff. Um, and even so, Danny Richman, who runs, I think it's. SEO training London or training SEO London. Um, he releases loads of these sheets that integrate with AI, so alt text generation or these super small things that will just provide efficiencies and creating your own tools with using ChatGPT, obviously, uh, within Google Sheets to do a lot of stuff that you don't necessarily want to do. Um, I've tried to stay away from lots of these fancy AI tools and that sort of thing because I feel like a lot of them are just it's just ChatGPT with a fancy skin yeah. on the top of it. So mm -hmm. build what you want in Google Sheets pretty quickly. Um, like I'm not a developer by any means. I can kind of read and understand what's going on, but I'm not a developer. And some of the stuff that I've been able to make over the last six months, I'm amazed that I can do that thing quite easily within like an hour. So yeah, I'd say just experiment and make your own tools and see, see what you can do. So you're saying... Tool, tools for purpose really over tools that are there for the you know obviously profitability etc which like you say they're all they're all on the foundations of chat gpt and of course uh, you say you're not a developer there and you didn't know anything of course you could just ask chat gpt how to do it and it will teach you as well so um you know i've had some success by writing some formulas for um you know google sheets as well um you know chat gpt can pump out code as well for those that are um, budding co uh, coders amongst us um it will Finally, answer all your questions if you can, especially Chat GPT four. Very powerful. Yeah. One, um, yeah. Sorry, one plugin I was just going to say that everyone should, once they have access to plugins should definitely try out. It's just Wolfram, which is like calculated mathematics because Chat GPT sucks at maths. Install <laughs> Wolfram, you can then build calculators and actually work stuff out. So it's awesome for for doing that sort of thing. Well, finally, something I have in common with ChatGPT. We both we both suck at maths, so yeah. that's fine. That's why I'm in the creative zone. Um, and, and finally, over to you, Andy, just quickly. What, what tools have you got that you've been using? Um, excuse me while my dog goes crazy at the postman. I love it. Um, yeah, so um, I've been using AI tools since 2021, um, and and some 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 really some confessions a little bit here i've got ranking content that's ranking generating thousands of visitors use it's ai written and that has been since 2021 and i've tested it on multiple sites multiple domains there isn't any problem with with 
AI content. Now, what I am, um, I'm going to give a little secret away on this webinar to everyone anyway. So uh, right now I, I write a, a weekly newsletter that goes out to about, I think it's about 13,000 people. And I used to spend two hours on that a weekend. And then I spent um, some time training chat GTP to be able to write it for me. Now, it still has to have my insight. But instead of writing, spending hours doing it, I can put my insight and I've trained it on how I write, how I, my tone of voice, the kind of format on it. And it spent some time, some back and forth between me and chat GTP. And, and now I can get that done in about 25 minutes. So that that was a real stumbling block for me in terms of thought leadership. So my 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 tools, if I'm honest with you, there's a new tool called SEO Wind, which has literally just been released the other day. And I, I advise people to check that out because it is really good for briefs and it's producing the best first draft AI content I've ever seen. Now, that being said, um, what I still think we've got a long way to go is chat GTP. So, um, but I think it's probably us need to be trained on chat GTP more than chat GTP needs to be trained itself because it's getting the most out of it. I never thought, thought leadership, I've tried for years to try and get thought leadership content done quicker. And, um, and what really is the problem is it's thought leadership. It requires you to think. The thing is, you know that you know what's going on with something and you can quickly adapt because you can see strategy and we can see patterns and recognize it. And, and they say pattern is, uh, you know, intelligence is pattern recognition. So we can see those patterns in anything. But then we've got to try and get our thoughts down. And, you know, you've been limited to typing speed from now on in terms of the fastest type you be able to do that. You've been limited in terms of your, your standard of grammar and your ability to write uh, sentences and, and structure. Now, with thought leadership, if I can crack the thought leadership code of ChatGPT, which is fantastic, it can build great content in a short period of time that's based on my thoughts. So that's my sort of like real big tip is to go back to ChatGPT and make it work in terms of, yeah, I think it's great we can do these the boring things, but I think its greatest potential hasn't been realized yet. And I'm thinking, well, how can we do that? Now, if I'm honest with you, I didn't figure out this. Chat GTP, work. it figured it for me. It actually, we worked it out together how we could do it. And it was quite a bizarre conversation with me to and fro in and asking, speaking to it as if it was in the room to me, like a human. <clears throat> so what I would say is, you know, Chat GTP is um, a great tool, but we probably need to get more out of it. And I think we need to be like, you know, Rocky Balboa's trainer, you know, and 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 Rocky too. And we need to be putting it to work constantly and and making it do more for us and seeing what the potential of it is out there. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, cool. Well, guys, that's the that's the questions that I had for you. So we're going to quickly go over to the chat. I've got a few questions in there that we'll um we'll ask quickly. So um we'll kind of do this as a bit of a speed round here um in order to get this wrapped up in, in time. Uh, so the top voted question here is um. Uh, which I'll ask all of you to just give 10, 15 second answers to. Um, starting with you, Jess, uh, should SEOs change their job titles in line with these changes uh, to future proof their careers slash hiring potential? I've thought about this and I think I will. I don't know what to yet. Maybe search experience curator. Who knows what it will be, but I think it will happen at some point. Yes. So it's a yes from you. Adam, do you think, uh, have you thought about this yet? Any, uh, any opinions? Um, I, I... I haven't no, but I don't think we will. We're still we're still optimizing for search. It just might not be in the same place. More about the skills rather than the title. Andy, I think SEO is a really bad name anyway for what we do in terms of it just makes people think just search, and I think it's going to go broader. So, I'm with Jessica. I think yes, we need to change the names, but not yet because SEO is still the category that we work within and changing that would be disastrous and you probably reduce the amount of opportunities that are out there for you. So any change regarding the SEO title is going to be years away, in my opinion. Yeah, I, th I think so as well. I think it took long enough for it to settle on the one that it's on. Um, and yeah, um, it might be uh, one of those where um, the cart in front of the horse for, for a little while on this one, unfortunately. Um, so another question here is, um, once again, we'll start with you, Jess, on this one just quickly. Um, uh, how should we deal with clients who question the state of SEO? Um, for example, the ones who don't understand the power and impact that SEO, when done right, can have. Um, when they question whether they need SEO or if they can get AI to do it for them. So when the client says to you, hey, I can do this, surely, um, with myself, how, how do you answer these questions? 
Oh, it's a tough one. Always has been. I think um, something that I always like to come back with is a question. For example, how much is it going to cost you to not do SEO right? That's always gets them thinking about the potential drawbacks of, of using AI. Brilliant answer. Adam, how do you, how do you shirk these, if, these questions? If, if you've tried pushing it and tried to explain it and they still won't, still won't take it, then let them do it. Um, <laughs> there'll, be, there'll be a cleanup operation in a couple of years to fix what they've done. Um, but if a client's pushing you and they think that they know best after paying you to do something for them, then so be it. Let them, let them get on with it. Yeah, I agree. I think there's still that confusion at this point that there's these tools out there that can automate things. The term automation makes people kind of go, oh, automation. I'm good at that. I can do that. I've automated my home Alexa devices. I can automate my SEO for my website. Yeah, unfortunately, we're not quite. Yeah. And anyone that's used um, ChatGPT or any of these things to try to, um, you know, create something for them in terms of um, SEO, keywords, content, etc., knows that um, it, it can help get you there. But there still needs to be that human input at this point and professional input as well, because you know at the end of the day it's not something you can learn, learn overnight and I think um, the fear is beginning to wane a little bit as as professionals have realized this it's a good tool but it isn't the be all and end all just yet who's to say where it will go but at this point I still think it's professional driven um, Andy your thoughts on this quickly I think it goes back to the old adage of, of if you think it's expensive to hire a professional wait till you hire an amateur and I think it's it's going to be if you think it's expensive to hire a professional wait till you just use ai and i think that's the um you know the best comment to, to then that on in terms of i think people people need to know what they're doing to use ai and, and when it comes to outsourcing we always say don't outsource something you can't do yourself or haven't done at least once and i think that's probably the same thing with with seo if you're going to use ai you need to find an seo that's that's that knows how to do seo the right way and use ai the right way Great answers, guys. Right, we've got trying to get two more questions in quickly before before we um we 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 uh finish the webinar. Um, so okay, question here. Um, my whole career is based on copyright, editing, and, and content strategies. Uh, my job will be the first to go as AI can replace me. Oh, no, no one can replace you, Shannon. Of course not. <laughs> um, how should I diversify my skill set? Quite a good question there. Yeah, you know, kind of what we were alluding to earlier. Can our, our legacy roles diversifying into SEO? Um, you see that? And how would you advise um, Shannon to, to do so? Uh, Jessica, kicks off again. Yeah, it's a good question. I think on the one hand, I wouldn't worry too much because for a long while, we're still going to need you. Um, but I think one thing potentially to do is niche down because when it comes to SGE, the clicks are still going to go to very niche content. So if somebody's searching for something very specific in the investment industry, for example, um, Bard won't be able to answer that with a good amount of detail. So I would recommend niching down and getting becoming an expert in one industry and really pushing yourself as the go-to copywriter in that industry, um, because there will always be a need for people that know things in detail, um, regardless of what happens to search. Adam, what advice would you give to people looking to diversify potentially? I, again, agree that I don't think um, it will be the, it might not be the first to go just yet. Um, it's, for me, people are going to get super bored of AI content. As, as far as we can go in the next two years, maybe, and as good as that content will get, I think people will get bored of it. And we need storytellers that can create stories within content and really good content. So I think if you're that way inclined, that way. But if not, niching down, I think, as Jess said, is the way to go. And Andy, quickly, you've retrained over the years as a, you know, from a traditional um, work role into an SEO. So, um... 10 seconds yeah, I, can you give us some tips and advice there <laughs> yeah i have a different view i think seo content writing is done for a career in terms of um it, it it's it's going to churn out a lot of things that, that is just exactly what somebody needs to read to answer a, a questions and get the and get to understand something and scan something to get information but i don't think that that's the end of shannon or anyone's career i think they're going to have to evolve i think content design is the industry i would get myself into and that's that's not just knowing how to create this content it's how to make it look good read good how to make graphics for the content understand seo around content or you know learn all those things you know so up yourself for an seo become good about copywriting 
That's another avenue that's going to go there. And also create unexpected content, thought leadership, help thought leaders themselves to get their thoughts out there, ghost writing, things like that. There's so many opportunities out there. But I think the SEO content side is probably going to be exhausted, but there's not, but it's going to open up massive opportunities for content out there. So I think content writer is probably to a degree going, content producer is probably more going to happen in the future. And I think I can't wait because there's going to be so many great things to read. Awesome. And one last question, guys, I think will fit in. So this will just be a yes, no answer with just one one reason. Uh, do you think Google and other search engines will keep softening their stance on AI generated content? Jess? Yes. AI content already ranks all over the internet. Yep. And they, are, yeah, they have no idea how to find it. <laughs> and Andy, I can guess what your answer might be. Yeah, it, 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 it's here to stay. Fantastic. Well, on that very profound words from Andy there, it's here to stay, guys. Um, and that about wraps up our, our first um, Renaissance webinar um, for today. So thank you, everyone that joined us in the chat and asked questions. Sorry if we didn't get around to answering your question, but I, I tried to answer as many as possible. Um, let's go have a quick look at the poll. So the question was, are you worried that AI could replace you or even destroy your role? 46% um, of you said no. 15% said yes, and 37% of you were unsure. So we're kind of uh, no unsure here. I don't think any of you are fully concerned yet at this point that it can destroy your role or career, which is great. Um, I think as the um, expert panel has showed us today, it's a tool. It's something we can use as part of our arsenal. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be a, a fear-mongering tool that we've, we've, we've all seen over the last couple of um, months, etc. cetera. Um, remember, there's news cycles out there. AI has been trending, so it's been very fear-driven. That's how the media likes to work. So um, maybe it's time now to have a look at the tools that are out there that could enhance your career and start to work in harmony with AI and, and see how it could, um, you know, start to bring value to what you do. I think it's valuable within any part of the industry, um, SEO, the digital PR realm, um, copywriting, etc. Remember, it's not just there to replace you, it's there to aid you. You've got copywriting tools that can help proofread and, um, you know, interject um, new theories and thoughts for you as well. So do not fear the machines. The machines are here to stay and they are here to, to help us. Um, so yeah, so thanks uh, a lot uh, to our panel. Thank you very much to Jess, Adam and Andy. Um, you can find these guys on LinkedIn, follow them. They offer some great insights through their posting, um, weekly posting. Um, Andy Holland also has his um, weekly um, SEO newsletter, which is worth signing up. So that's Andy Holland uh, on, on LinkedIn. Um, it's Jessica Redman and it's Adam Brown. Um, also follow JBH on, on um, LinkedIn to find out when we'll be doing our next Renaissance um, webinar. Um, that should be coming in the next month or so. So um, uh, thanks to everyone that uh, joined us today um, and keep an eye out for further episodes. So um, yeah, that's me. My name is Andy Blayson. I am the co-founder of JBH, the digital PR agency, and I'm signing off. And that was Renaissance. So thank you very much, guys, for joining me and hope you have a great rest of the day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks all.